two on one action here from John Jones and Mr. Bonner. Um, sorry, I feel like a 15 year old saying that, but it kind of just simply amuses me. Um, we are in round one, not very deep into round one, everyone's still a bit dry, and we're going to see. Um, John Jones used something that's not very not used very often in MMA, which is two on one or the Russian tie. So here, what we can see is we can see John Jones has got a. I would say it's a down block into the hip here to stop um, Stefan Bonner being on knee and be able to move his body into him. The arm is in a kind of strange position for Stefan Bonner, his shoulder is not quite in socket and holding this position with his arm would be really uncomfy. Um, John's head is in a in a good spot for head control, his forehead's against the side of Stefan Bonner's head and he's keeping his, his weight sideways and Stefan is either going to take this arm out due to discomfort maybe or he's going to take this arm out to try and move and create space but in doing so he's kind of given John what he needs you saw John was constantly moving around in this direction which puts more and more pressure on the arm with that down block to the hip so now we see Stefan move that arm on the inside and in the front John's still got really good head position he's still sideways to Stefan Bonner so Stefan Bonner from here now really has to try and turn towards John but what John is doing is he is controlling the bicep here so he's got inside bicep control, which means that although he's lost his head control here, Stefan's managed to lose his head, move his head into a better stage of Stefan, Stefan control, head control. <laughs> we are seeing inside bicep control, which is stopping Bonner being able to punch John Jones in the face. We also see that they're spinning in a circle as John Jones moves in this direction, his hips rotating around, and as though he's trying to get to the back of Stefan Bonner at all points. So we see that this arm of John's is now down his elbow is behind the tricep of Stefan Bonner and his hand is gripping the tricep uh, gripping the wrist sorry of Stefan Bonner now John has got really long arms now for this situation this really helps okay uh, as we're going to see with the grip that he has as he turns so as we see, we as we turn with the grip, Stefan's doing pretty well here. He's got his head in between the shoulder and the, the head. He's trying to make space and he's trying to turn towards uh, John. John is hanging on his arm. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to use that to bring Stefan Bonner's elbow across his front of his belly, across to about down here and pull down on it as well so that Stefan is being hung on by John Jones. The biceps control is stopping any attacks from this hand and also it's stopping Stefan being able to turn towards John okay so we'll see what happens from here we see them slowly jockeying for position now John is gonna go for the two-on-one so he's gonna take his hand off the bicep and he's gonna reach to grab the two-on-one now initially he grabs the glove which is cheating <laughs> and he's palm up there but what this has done is it's freed up the hand for Stefan Bonner. And because um, John Jones's head is not in the well, it's not between Stefan Bonner's shoulder and head, it is a target. But we all know that if you keep your head really close to the other person's head, it's really difficult for you to hit it hard. I know that sounds a bit daft, but it's very difficult for Stefan Bonner to punch John Jones hard in the head because it's in a difficult spot to hit it. So he's going to continue to control the arm with both hands and there we go now you can see that John's got hold of the glove and his other arm is in here and he's holding the wrist actually with this other hand okay so it's a different kind of two-on-one that we we would see normally with a shorter fighter normally this hand would be underneath the armpit the elbow would be underneath the armpit and we would be lifting that up but with John's build he can actually go underneath the tricep and get hold of the wrist. Absolutely fantastic. I hope you can get to see it in a bit. So, we see Stefan with his head position give a couple of digs to John. And we see John start to stretch the arm across the body. We've seen Stefan pummel out and control John Jones's wrist. Okay. At this moment, John's in a bit of danger. We can see this fist is going to come in. And we're going to see him get a couple of digs. Bunk. But what that allows him to do is to get his head into a safer spot and 
if you see here he's going to do Aikido uh, the thumb and the fingers so the fingers are here the thumb is here so the gap for him to twist his arm out of is facing downward at the moment so all he's going to do is he's going to rotate his hand out of that see how he just really easily rotated his hand out of that yeah and it was a rotation of the wrist if you imagine that the wrist is flat and the thumb and finger are trying to hold the edges of it if you if you look at your wrist it is kind of fatter if you look down on it than if you look at the side of it it means that you can slice that wrist out between the finger and thumb and that's what he does and then he goes up and he grabs the wrist of Stefan now Stefan is doing his damned best to try and get his head back on the inside of John's head that's the only way that he's going to be able to turn back to John but John is also past this elbow so this elbow is actually now on his right pec so Stefan is not going to be able to turn towards him it's beautiful control and even in MMA it means that Stefan really can't do very much so he goes to try and control the head which actually means that John Jones can actually take the arm further across his body and as he steps into the control zone, at first there was the possibility of the sweep. So he could have taken the leg that's next to his foot and been able to sweep on the inside of that. He doesn't do that initially, he's still controlling the arm. But he's gone into Stefan's control zone. He steps his other foot up into the control zone and what he's going to do now is he's going to step by Stefan's right foot. And now he's going to look for a step in sweep so he's going to try and reap that leg or he's going to try and sweep that leg with the knee and drive the arm through to try and get Stefan to fall what it's actually happened is though he's ended up offsetting Stefan Bonner so Stefan's managed to step his foot out and catch his balance but all his weight because of the positioning of the arm here all his weight now is torsioned over in this direction so he's completely offset falling in this direction what this is going to allow John to do is take this arm out from underneath the armpit and be able to reach for the hip in fact he's already done that so he's going to take the arm out and he's going to reach for the hip as he's offset Stefan Bonner and he reaches for the double leg Okay, he manages to get around the knees and just because of Stefan Bonner's momentum Stefan slips out with the rubber leg so the fact that Stefan's entire back is towards John Jones and that his uh, foot is pointing in this direction means that he can slide his leg out uh, John really needs to be in a tripod position with his shoulder pinning the back of the knee at this point he doesn't manage to do that but he does manage to use his athleticism to get back in control. Yeah, so I I really like this because you never never really see the two on one used very much in MMA, and here it's used very well. Um, I think it's got a lot to do with um, John Jones's build, but um, he uses it effectively, and he also uses it effectively against Daniel Cormier, which I'll I'll look at in this as well. Okay, let's have a look at the next bit. <laughs> Okay, we're in the Daniel Cormier uh, first fight now. Um, John Jones is going to, again, go to this two-on-one to control Daniel Cormier, I, who I must admit is a fantastic wrestler, but is knackered at this point. So I don't think he's up to his usual level of wrestling. So we're seeing them have a, a, a grapple, and we see Daniel try to pummel under for the underhook. So we see him try and pummel under for the underhook. Now... John has managed to reach across and grab the wrist of Daniel and he's also gone underneath the elbow to push the elbow across. He's got really nice head control. Even though he's the taller person, his head is stopping um, Daniel being able to get anywhere in underneath the hips here. So now we can see the hand of John Jones collecting the wrist of Daniel Cormier this is a high underhook uh, Daniel works a lot of body locks and stuff when he's um, upper body clinch wrestling and taking down so the fact that John has taken this arm out of the um, equation means that Daniel doesn't really have any of his usual trip tosses you know or throws 
So now he controls the wrist, and John keeps his head underneath the chin of Daniel. Daniel's trying to work his head out all around this. And we see John push the elbow, pass the elbow, and then he just drives up nicely into a high underhook, and he's controlling the wrist. He's actually under here, and he's controlling the wrist of Daniel Cormier while he's got an underhook on this hand. I mean, not many of us could do that, to be honest. Daniel's quite short. Sorry, Daniel, you're a legend, but you're quite short. John has these uber long arms, so he can do that. He can, like, have a two-on-one grasp with just one arm. Normally, we would have this deep underneath the, the armpit to work, but John's different being. So... He's working in, and now as he's working in, Daniel's trying to get his chin in, trying to get his head in, to be able to try and rip the arm out, which he can't do, because John is super strong. We also have John now gather the glove at this point. So he's holding on to the, to the glove, and he is holding on to the glove. Um, if you're going to put a glove on someone's hand, and you don't expect it to be grabbed, then you're a silly sausage. So he's holding the glove now and he's going to keep that really nice and tight and he's going to drive the arm across Daniel's body all right and that has now taken all Daniel's attacks out of this especially as his hips are so far out we'd more we'd really want John to have his head on this side of Daniel so on the opposite side of Daniel and we'd want his hips more out to this side for any attacks but what he's done is negated any attacks from Daniel right now if John's hips were in there would be trips there back trips and stuff but um, John's a bit wiser than that I've been caught there but John won't be caught there so now what he does from this position is he's gonna nicely give a, a jaw shaking shoulder and then he's just gonna take Daniel slowly to the cage and Daniel cannot get his hips offline, he can't get his back off the cage, he can't do anything as long as John has this level of control and now he's using his height against Daniel with this two on one, his shoulder is underneath the jaw and he's compressing the head into here, he's compressing the shoulder onto the body. Daniel is in all sorts of trouble. There's no attacks from here and he can't escape out. So John can just sit here and knee until he decides to change his attack. And as we see, he's now slowly working out to change his attack. But I mean, this is amazing. This is underneath the shoulder and then his hand is grasping the wrist and he's pushing the arm across with one arm. Absolutely beautiful work. Um, and as I say, I, d I don't see many wrestlers, there are a few, I don't see many wrestlers using the two-on-one in MMA. It's quite a scary thing to do because you're leaving one arm free because you've got both arms on the other arm. But honestly, it um, works right. And if you have that um, length <laughs> for your two-on-one work, then go for it. Honestly, it's really good. Cheers. Bye.